SolidWorks and Creo Parametric have tools for increasing the speed of placing components into an assembly. For example, let's say that I want to place a fastener in this assembly. Let's go to the insert components. I've already got it open in another window. And then I could just sort of like drop it in here and we've got the component. Then we would add our mates to define the location. So I could go to mate and then I could pick, hey, this surface and then this surface over there and add some other mates. But the point is, I'm probably going to assemble that component the same way every single time. So rather than defining the mates after I place the component, I can define the mates in the component and then use them when placing it. So let's cancel out of the mates. Let's get rid of this component. I will right click and delete it. Let's click yes in the confirm delete dialog box. And I'm going to switch windows to the individual part. And so if I want to define those mates inside of this part, in SOLIDWORKS, it's called a mate reference. And the way that you get to the command is from the reference geometry dropdown. Here we have mate reference and we have the property manager that opens up on the left side of the screen. And you'll see that there are collectors for a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary reference. So you can define up to three references. Here we have the reference name, and by default, it's called default. I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. But for the primary reference, what'll help when I am placing this component is to use this edge. And then for the secondary reference, I will select the surface, and then I can go to the drop down list next to the paper clip. The paper clip is the symbol in SOLIDWORKS for mates. And by selecting that cylindrical surface, you can use it either default, tangent, or concentric. I want it to be concentric. And then for the third reference, I'm going to use this flat surface. And from the drop down list, we have the choices of tangent, coincident, or parallel. Let's choose coincident. And then we have another drop down list where we can specify if we want the surface here and the surface it's assembled to to be aligned, anti aligned, or closest. In this particular case, I want anti aligned. And so those are my mate references. Let me hit the check mark. And now we have a folder that lists that mate reference in here. Be aware that you can actually create multiple different mate references inside of your model. Now let's go back to the assembly. If I want to place this using the mate reference, let's go back to the insert components. And here we have the part. And now I'm going to pick and I'm going to drag it. And you'll notice that as I get close to the location where I want it, it snaps in there because of those mate references. And here you can see it in the model. And one thing about this is that you'll notice that there is a minus sign in parentheses indicating that it is not fully constrained because there is still a rotational degree of freedom in this situation. So that's one method that you can use for that. Let me select this and I'm going to right click and choose delete. And let's click yes in the confirm delete dialog box. Let me go back to the other window to mention something else about these mate references in SOLIDWORKS. I will select this one and then let's right click and choose edit definition. And I'm going to change the name in here. And mate references work differently if they have a name or they don't have a name. And I recommend defining a name in here. And in some places it says that you should make it the same name as the name of the mate reference in the assembly that's going to accept it. Uh, actually, it turns out that as long as you give it a name, it's actually going to evaluate all the mate references together. So let's hit the check mark out of here. And then I'll go to the engine assembly. And let's go to the reference geometry drop down from the assembly tab in the ribbon. Then let's choose mate reference. And for the references, well, I will select the edge as the first reference. 
For the secondary reference, let me select the cylindrical surface. And for the third reference, I will select this flat surface. And the order matters if the order of the selections are the same as in the component, then it will help match them up. And let's change this one to concentric. Let's change this one to coincident and anti-aligned. That's good. Once again, I will rename it rather than using the default name and hit the check mark. And now let's go to insert components. Let's select this one over here. And you'll notice that it just automatically snapped in there. I didn't really have to move close to it at all. It just recognized that, hey, we already have a mate reference in the assembly. Let's hit the check mark in there and we've got it placed. And in this situation, we have the F indicating that it's actually fixed. Who knows? And then let's go to the view mates. You'll notice in this particular situation, when we view the mates, even though I selected an edge, a cylindrical surface, and a flat surface, we actually only get two different mates inside of here. Let's close that. And again, you can expand the mates to see them inside of the model. Again, that's another big difference with mates in SOLIDWORKS versus constraints in Creo Parametric in that the mates exist in this mates folder. Although if you expand the component, you can see the mates in the engine manual uh, located in its own folder as well. But again, mates sort of exist at the assembly level and are created like after you place the component. So anyhow, now let's jump over to Creo Parametric. Okay, here we have an engine assembly. And if I go to the assemble button, let me grab the bolt that I want to place. This one has a family table, so I will select the instance that I want to use. And normally when you go to place the component, well, here we can manually define our different constraints, sort of like I showed in SOLIDWORKS. We can select the different services that we want. Here we got a coincident constraint, but to save ourselves time and effort, let's define that information in the model itself. Let's cancel out of here. Let me go to my window dropdown and change over to the part itself. And in Creo Parametric, it's not called a mate reference. It's called a component interface. And I've got a nice big button for that right in the ribbon. Let's choose that. Here we have the component interface dialog box, and you can name it whatever you want. Changing the name doesn't have an effect in Creo Parametric, like changing the name of a mate reference in SOLIDWORKS. But let's define our different constraints. I will choose automatic, and I'll pick the cylindrical surface. Let's add in another constraint. I'll pick this flat surface. You'll notice the explicit type here is mate. We also have the align option. That's sort of like the aligned and anti-aligned choice that you have in SOLIDWORKS. But I'm happy with the mate, which corresponds to anti-align. Everything is good in here. Be aware that there's other stuff that you can do, like adding in criteria for making sure that you get the right match. Uh, so, for example, you could have parameters and features and put a parameter in here and try to say, hey, this stuff has to match up. But again, that's just a little additional stuff that you can do. Let's hit the check mark. And then if I go to the footer in the model tree down here, you can see our interface. And there is a little green diamond on it. And that indicates that this is the default component interface. Oh yeah, by the way, let me right click on this and edit definition from the mini toolbar. And so here we have the name of it. Right now from the drop down list, this can be used for either placing the component or having other components assembled to it. I could say, hey, I'm only using this one for placing the component if I want to. Let's hit the check mark to complete out of there. And now I'll hop back over to the engine assembly. To assemble the component, let's click on the assemble icon and grab the part. Again, this has a family table, so we'll choose our instance. And the way that component interfaces work in Creo Parametric by default is that you have the component, you have the different interfaces, and then we're going to pick 
the corresponding geometry. So for example, we can pick the cylindrical surface and then the flat planar surface. And there it is located in the model. The component is orange because it is fully constrained. We have the allow assumptions option turned on. Even though there is a rotational degree of freedom, it chooses the first mathematical solution in order to allow it to be fully constrained. And now that we have the first component in there, you can right mouse click and there's the option for new location if you wanted to pick another cylindrical surface and another flat surface in order to place the component multiple times. You can go to new location and do that as many times as you want. But let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button to complete out of there. If you want behavior sort of like how you assemble in SOLIDWORKS, oops, I spun myself around there, uh, then you are going to use something called the auto place option. Let me zoom in over here. Now we'll go to the assemble button and let's grab our component and the instance. And this time, instead of picking the geometry, in the ribbon you have this auto place option and you're going to pick a screen point. I'll just pick approximately on the screen. And here it came up with five different guesses. If I expand the preferences, here is the maximum number of locations. That's why we got five guesses. You can change this number. And right now it's using a search area based on 50% of the model size. You can see if any of these guesses were correct. And in this case, they weren't. But let's just select the first one and use the close button and then hit the middle mouse button in order to place the component. And just like you can create component interfaces to receive components in the assembly in SOLIDWORKS, hey, we can do that here. Right in the middle of the ribbon, we have our component interface command, and then we can click on it, and then for our constraints, we will use this cylindrical surface, and then for our other constraint, we'll use this flat surface. And if I go to the name of the interface, we can change it from being used for placing and receiving just to receiving different components. We get a warning that the interface will no longer be the default. That's fine. And then hit the check mark. And here you can see the component interface in the model tree. If you right click on it, you can choose to move it to the footer. And there we can see it in there, but if you want it back in the main model tree, hey, let's move from the footer. And now that we have a component interface created at the assembly level, let's go to assemble and grab our bolt. I'm going to use a smaller diameter because the hole looks smaller. Let's use the open button. And instead of going interface to geometry, here we can choose interface to interface. Now we get this little diamond on the computer screen. If you are in older versions of Creo Parametric, it'll look like a white circle, but we can choose the interface and it automatically matches them up. And we can hit the check mark. And if you have multiple different interfaces at the assembly level, you can actually select multiple ones for placing the component multiple times. But let's hit the check mark in order to complete out of there. And a few other things to mention about component interfaces. If I go to File and then Options, over on the left, we can change the category to Assembly. And if I scroll down in here, we have a number of different options for using component placement interfaces. So for example, we have the default constraint being used by default, or you could choose from list if you want someone to get a dialog box that'll list all the various different component interfaces that might be in a model. Here is an option to allow the creation of temporary component placement interfaces so that the first time that you assemble a component in your session of Creo Parametric, it'll remember how you assembled it and it'll allow you to use that temporary component interface to place the component again and again and again. And you can save that interface in the model if you want to use it in your next session of Creo Parametric. And here we can place the default component interface using, by default, multiple locations. That's why we were able to hold down the right mouse button and choose new location. But you can also change this to single location, for example, if you wanted not 
to allow people to do that. And here we have automatic placement options. So in the auto place dialog box, this is where the five value came from. Here's the 50% of the model size. We have a bunch of other different options for controlling how it checks for things like interference or making sure that you have the right matching parameters or criteria like I showed earlier. But anyhow, let's click the OK button out of there. And now you get a sense of the difference between component interfaces in Creo Parametric and mate references in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.